Um, this session is called Host Your Own Drupal PR Environments and Automated Bad Testing uh, with DevShop. Um, I'm just going to cover like why this is a good idea. Um, a pull request environment or a merge request environment, whatever you want to call it, um, you want a separate environment. So I, I kind of didn't, I kind of forgot about this whole DTAP thing and apparently there's Wikipedia page on it, but the whole concept is you need multiple places for running your software so you know it works. Um, Acquia Cloud's got these, you know, stage prod RA release, you know, they've got all these environments. Uh, same thing with Pantheon, you have these multi-devs and things to have as many sites as you want on a different branches. And, you know, the guiding principle is like always use dev and then test before going to production, right? Um, but sometimes, like, you've got a big project, you've got like a development team working, they're, they're small, they're tightly knit, they're fine all pushing the master and like working it out and pushing the modules, it's fine, they're like really good communicators and they can operate like that, they might operate like that fine for a while. But then like eventually you kind of have a new person coming in and like, you, you might need to grow the project, you put, you bring in a new developer, if they're all pushing on to master, I, I found this little nice little visual metaphor of, uh, <laughs> you know, you're like coding, coding, and then you hire a superstar, and they're like, oh, I got a major problem, I'm gonna skip past all your, <laughs> all your code, and just ram my stuff through, not even knowing if that all this other stuff is in progress and not ready to actually go to production, uh, and you know, you get a big wreck. So, and that's because software development's not linear, right? It kind of goes all over the place. If you branch your code, you should branch your sites too. Uh, so this is kind of how it works, right? You got your production site on a domain, developer does code on a separate branch in Git, they push it to GitHub or GitLab or whatever, there's a pull request there, a form, they fill it out, they hit a button, that triggers a webhook notification to our DevShop server to launch a new site. So it clones the production site, names it after the PR, automatically gives it a domain name, uh, preferably runs some tests on it, Either they pass or fail. If they fail, we basically just do it again. They do a git push, it pulls it to the site, the same site again. You kind of rinse and repeat until you get the full, all your passing, you know, all your tests pass. Eventually, maybe a human goes in there. I lost my, some of my graphics. <laughs> There's a person icon supposed to be there. Uh, and then maybe the human says, okay, that site looks good because I can click on it and view it. And I click merge and I go to release it. Um, and so, this is just a much, much better way to operate instead of going like dev test live, dev test live all the time because your each PR environment is like for a bug or a feature, it's isolated. You know, you can go check like just that feature um, and like you don't have to tell people like if you're doing a demo, like stop working, <laughs> stop pushing code to my site because I'm showing the client and I don't want you to break something in the middle of my demo. You make a separate environment and you can show them and not worry about all that stuff. So the way it looks in, in GitHub here is this is a pull request page. You submit it like an issue. Uh, the developer can put a description in there, all these things. And then as they push, you know, you see the commits. And then GitHub has a commit status API that we tell it, our DevShop server tells it, this commit failed the tests. Um, and this one passed. That's why you get the little green one there. Uh, in addition, if I can make this thing go away, I'll just mouse off for a second, where it says John Pugh deployed to and the link, that's the GitHub deployment API. You can actually tell GitHub where the code went and so that way they can show the developers right there in the PR. So as soon as they push, it, it starts out by saying John Pugh requested a deployment to. You, you actually tell it like we started and then we finished and then it actually puts a link directly to the site right there in the UI so the developers can just click, right? Or the uh, the reviewers, the project managers, everybody can just QA see. People. Huh? QA. QA people, whoever, right? Like we can all see exactly where it's going. We, you know, you don't have to like email people for links, all that stuff. So it's a great, it's a great cycle. Um, some of these other hosting providers, you can kind of, kind of get that, but basically, it's not like a full-on pull request kind of thing. There's the like you can create environments in Aquia Cloud, choosing your branch and, and name. Same thing with Pantheon, it's in multi-dev, it's slightly different workflows, but basically the same idea, you have a branch in a site. Um, but you can't, it's, it's, it's not like a full like creation destroy, but basically there's other products, I should have added uh, Provo CI from ZipTech, it's like basically they're building these web services where you just pay a monthly fee and they are doing the same concept. 
And it, like the guys from Lullabot actually gave me the idea five years ago to do this. And they've been working on it. Now it's a product, tugboat.qa, but basically it started out as just a Jenkins script and like a configuration that they set up doing the same concept. And this is for what they're doing for like NBC, like major websites, you know, The Tonight Show and, and other things like that. And it totally changed their relationship with their clients because then they could send a link to their clients and they like, review it here. You know, this is the new page we're working on. Uh, and it's just everybody loves it. So they, they designed a whole new product around it. Very similar. And that's like the GitHub comment actually right here. Um, and I want to do that too. I, I used to have GitHub comments and it was more, detail, more verbose and it's nice. So I'm probably going to go back to it, give it more detail. Um, you can do the same thing with Jenkins, for example, but basically if you do that, you're totally in charge of, you have to write all your own scripts or at least use something to like get the Drupal site running. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of maintenance in that, and even if you're super smart and you can do it, like, you then have to maintain that long term and like hopefully it still works and Jenkins isn't the best UI, so you can get it done. But we built DevShop to be a great tool for developers and they don't have to worry about any of that stuff. All the scripts are built in. The cloning and the git pulling and the composer, all that stuff is built in because it's bigger and like you don't have to worry about any of it. So you just install it, you don't, you don't even need Jenkins at all. You can add it because it's open source and make your Agar dev shop a little bit better, but um, that's the, the whole thing. So <clears throat> this is like what a project page looks like. Um, project code name, toolbar, uh, this is, each one of these is a separate site. So we've got our production site here at a I keep trying to do the pinch zoom in, it doesn't work. Uh, you can have multiple domain aliases on there, and then the dev site has the dynamic domain and all that stuff. I'm not gonna go into every single button, but we got a lot of buttons and you can check it out. Um, and if you yeah, get devshop.com, has all the info you need to view it on GitHub. There's an install sh link down there. So just get that and run it on any Linux server, uh, you know, LTS, Ubuntu, preferably CentOS 7 or above. And it, it, we, that's what we test on, anyway. So, um, documentation on, uh, I don't know the URL, but you can easily find it. It's right, actually it's linked right on top of getdevshop.com right here, documentation. Uh, we have chat room, all this stuff. So, um, the install script is just, and this is how it ends. It just gives you a friendly link and graphics and run, tests itself to see this is the versions and it spits out a link and says, hey, welcome, and here's all the links you need to get help or whatever. Um, but that's basically it. This runs in about five minutes. You can click the link and uh, have your, let's stop this video. You get your, basically the new dev shop page where you have no projects. You go to create a project, you just put in a git URL and the name and you press a few more buttons and you get you get multiple sites, multiple copies of your sites running. Uh, there's a big create environment button that lets you basically start a new site, name it whatever you want, pick the branch or tag. This is not the PR stuff, but you can still have a branch environment instead of having it create and destroy automatically, just have it sit there um, cloning live. There's all these different options for how to install. Say you want to import, you have a big database, you can see, keep it as a file. We've made it so you can, it'll just import the SQL file. Um, and this is basically what it would look like when it's running tasks and things. Um, it's nice to know like how that site was created originally, how long ago, and what was the method. Um, so that's helpful. Um, and that's kind of the, the tour of the UI. So we're going to actually try to do some work today. That's the whole point of the, the PR demo, right? Um, so I've got two tasks. We'll see how far we get through both of them. The first one's really basic. Um, we don't have any team pictures on our homepage yet. so. Uh, we have an open pull request to do that. I'm going to review it and merge it. And then the second thing is we want a little bit of custom code to kind of do our user registration flow. I don't think I finished the coding on this one, so I may not code it the solution live today, but we'll run, we'll show the tests and how we wrote some hat tests to like actually do the clicking and make sure we're going from one page to the next the way the customer, which is me, wants it. Um, so yeah, basically the requirements here, you want to just see the page number. So this one's pretty simple. So uh, let's let's check it out. Um, this is our logged out homepage, um, devshop.support. It is a Drupal site, but this is basically just a static template file um, that has all our stuff on it. Um, and you can see we don't we don't have a team a team page right now. So if I go to the dev shop that's hosting this site which we call dashboard. Um, I can use my 
SL, uh, SSO single sign-on system to get into this one. And so here we go. So this is our project support. That's our code name for this particular project. Um, I've been firing up uh, example environments for friends um, by just pressing the button and typing in their name. Um, this is the, the live site here. And so, let's see here. Okay, so I already have a, an environment here, so I'm actually gonna go in. Uh, let me back up. Set, so this is how you get it going. Once you have your project, there's project settings. And in the project settings, there's lots of things. I'm gonna go straight to the GitHub integration. This lovely checkbox, if you check it, it'll create new environments every time it receives a pull request. It'll delete them whenever they're closed or merged. Uh, the method, it'll either, you can either select the install profile you want to run or you can just clone, clone a live environment. Um, and then this last one is cool because it'll wipe out the database on every push. So by default, it just does a git pull on every push and your site stays there. But if you're doing true kind of cycle for pull request environments and you're running full suite of automated tests, you kind of want that production, the, your database to be brand new, fresh sometimes because the act of testing it can change your database and it may not be an exact copy of production anymore and your testing might, isn't really a perfect kind of comparison of production uh, and running, running those tests against it. So this feature is great and it just wipes out the database, runs the, a reinstall is either a clone or a, the Drupal install. So that's super nice, but it does take longer. You know, so if you use that, because you're doing a whole copy. So you just kind of have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis if your site needs that or not. You hit save, and then those settings are ready to go. Um, there's a webhook URL. So this is like, this is how the magic happens, right? It's a unique webhook URL for each project. You basically put it in your GitHub or any other, anything that has a webhook will work. Um, <clears throat> And it basically pings our server whenever there's a new push or a new pull request. And you get all these nice logs and can see, you know, we just basically do things closed, right? So this was a pull request event ping that closed the PR. And it actually shows the response here. And we do, we don't, we don't print much because it's just for GitHub, but we tell, tell so we can at least debug it. We print out, okay, we got the pull request. We got, saw that it was closed. This is the environment that I wanted, that I'm going to delete. Um, so there's all sorts of neat stuff you can do with the APIs if you really wanted to get into it. Um, you could like fire up a new environment for every issue if you really wanted to, because it's Drupal. So put a put a new module in here and do whatever you do whatever you need. Um, okay, so if I go to this PR, I'm going to close it out. I'm going to pretend it never never happened. So just now my partner Stephanie here posted these links. They she added these commits. Uh, this actually runs on, it's an API key thing, so sometimes I use my DevShop bot account, so it'll say DevShop bot deployed to, and the link, and that's really cool, and this deployed thing is actual an actual link. Um, uh, we're going to do it a little in a cycle. So GitHub's got so many great features now, you can add a review, and not just a comment, so like I actually was able to click a button to say request changes, and like I was even able to upload a picture to say like, oh, these are the changes I would like. Um, and she can see that, and, and I can, it can notify me to say, come back and approve it. Um, so it shows comments and everything that happens. I added labels, um, edited the issue or the pull request. Um, it has assignment, just like issues, more comments. Um, I can go ahead and push to the same branch so we can collaborate. So I, I push this one here to fix a couple links. Uh, every time you push, it does this little notification API again, so I can easily, so I can tell, oh, it actually worked. Um, and then, yeah, here I, I'm doing closing and openings to fire these environments off. So I'm just going to close this for now. Um, and you can see over here, boom, delete site. Oops. And my, my watch and my phone just rings because I get notifications on Slack. Um, <laughs> you know, so that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> so this site, well, we haven't fully reactified or whatever the front end, so it's gone. Totally destroyed. So if I come back in here and I say, "Oops, not quite done. We're gonna, we're gonna, we want to open this back up." It's super simple. You press this button. We use this. Boom. So GitHub has a this API. We can tell GitHub that we're doing a deploy. It's not done yet. 
That's why it's orange, and we can run tests. And those aren't done yet, but that's actually from a previous test run, so that's a little, a little bug. But when you run the test, it's, it is orange until it's done, it turns red or green, and the whole UI changes. And you can actually configure GitHub to prevent you from being able to merge at all. Even if you get push, it'll block the push if you configure it to require these checks, um, which is really great. Because um, you can be super strict about it and say, like, I'm not even going to let anybody merge, period, unless these tests pass. And one of the things we want to do, um, and other systems do, is they keep adding more and more of these checks. So you can have, like, PHP Lint be one and all these other things, PHP Unit be another. Um, so we want to kind of enhance the testing system to do that so we can have even more things. Right now, it's basically just running the hat test. But if we go over here, we should see a new environment. And there it is, brand new, cloned a minute ago. Uh, linked, linked to the, this is the person that submitted the PR, so we actually grabbed the avatar from GitHub. Um, this links back to the PR. You can see it's on the this branch. What version of Drupal it's running. And there's the link, and I can click it, and there's a copy of my website, um, which didn't exist a second ago. Uh, not only is it a copy of my website, but it's on the new branch, so if I scroll down, I should see the work of my developer. Somewhere down, oh, yes, awesome. Right, so this is her work. I can see, great. Uh, yeah, it actually looks looks pretty good. This is this is awesome. Um, I want to see if she. There was a, some mobile mobile issues, so I'm just gonna like inspect this and try to make it mobile. Um, you know, so there's like a little bit of spacing issues, but you know what? I'm gonna just say it's fine. We can fix that in a in a another commit down in the future. Um, or I could just go in and edit it now, actually, why not? So in the pull request UI, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, there's a files changed tab, so we can actually see like every single file, and there's even an edit button here. So I think in the CSS, I should be able to, let's open up the site again, see what change I need to make. I really hate this built-in JavaScript fader, we're gonna get rid of that too. Uh, I need to see it in in a mobile viewport to see the bug, see the padding issue. Strange. Yeah. So there's stuff. I do an inspection, figure out where I need more padding, and I think I actually want it on the bottom of the previous one, right? Instead. So, yeah, look at that. Perfect. I adjust this large bottom, I think. Perfect. Okay, so I just need to change this line. Oh, it's an SCSS. Oh, lovely. Doesn't matter. Team section, team member. I'm going to find that. Change margin bottom. Margin bottom, 10. I can, GitHub has a great little preview changes button. You can just do this right here. Look, oh good, I didn't mess up anything else. Go back to edit, I can say, I can just use that commit message if I wanted to. Fix bottom padding. Um, yeah, you can actually create a new branch right from the UI as well, but I already have the branch, I already have the PR, so I'm just gonna commit directly to support UI. And as soon as I do that, I'm going over here because the webhook should kick in, and boom, there you go. There's your deploy. If you click the task, you can watch it happen. Boom. Oh, and it queued up a task for me, too. a test task. So it happens so fast you can't really see it, but basically we're trying to make it very transparent. You can see the git fetch, and then the git checkout, and it says it's behind, and then it does the pull and merges, and you can see the changes that were deployed. We even do submodule updates, so you can use git submodules if you want. Uh, doesn't matter get status just just to see uh, what the state is and it sees a composer JSON and it runs that Which is really great every time you push you can just put it in there and it runs automatically There's no it did it runs up a DB automatically, but there's nothing nothing to do uh, same thing here for the cache clearing and Then this here is oh a test task because we had configured it to run tests So this it does basically the same thing you can tell the project in settings the project settings 
testing the hat and where they are. And that's, that's all you need to do. Your composer JSON's in there, the hat YAML file's in there. It dynamically configures the hat for you. It tells it that you, you are, you need to, to run a hat test, you need to know the U, URI, you need to know the Drush alias and the path to files. We know all that, the developer may not ahead of time. So we just write a hat YAML file and run the tests uh, for each site. Um, so you don't have to basically, if you're ever doing your automated tests and you're using Jenkins, you basically create all these files ahead of time saying like, oh, if in Jenkins it's at this path, or this alias, and you don't have to worry about any of that um, with Dev Shop. Um, so my tests ran successfully, um, but I don't really have many. So let's say I want a new test, like I want to make sure that my face is actually on my homepage. That's a good, that sounds like a good test to have. Um, <clears throat> so again, GitHub API, GitHub website is actually perfectly fine for this. I could use locally and do a git push as well. But especially for small things like testing, this is great. So if I can, actually there's no changes in that file. So let's see here, how do I get to that file? I think if I go view it at this, oh no, I see. Yeah, I'll go to the branch. I'll go to the my tests folder. Under features, there's my basic tests. <clears throat> I'm gonna click this edit button. And this is the hat. Has anybody been using the hat yet? How many, like one, <laughs> three? You literally write them in English. Like, then I should see this. Then I press that. And there's like a million steps for all the different things you could want. You could identify specifically specific tags or classes rather identifiers. Press buttons. You can write your own steps. So you could say, given I have a hundred nodes, and like use PHP to create those nodes for you. Um, there's so many things you can do. Um, but I just want to see if my name is there. So and I should see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make an intentional typo here so you can see what happens when you type in a step that it isn't aware of. Uh, it actually tells you this is not defined, but if you wanted it to be defined, here's a PHP snippet. You drop it in your bootstrap file, and you have a test. It's like a million times easier than, than writing functional tests and other things, like people write Selenium tests in Python or whatever, and it's like <laughs> it's just unmaintainable when you really want to know what's the user doing. So again, I didn't click fast enough because it happened so quickly, but if I go back to the project, when I did that merge, it did the deploy 14 seconds ago and the test run is triggered right here. So without doing anything except hitting that commit button, I get git pulling the code to my server, to the right environment, uh, queuing up, the, it does a verify to make sure all the config is right, and then it triggers the test run, and there it is, it goes click, 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 and then I get this. Oh, so I didn't, I didn't fail, but I didn't pass either. So you get a warning. And so it, it couldn't tell what this was. It uses regex to figure out what step this is. And so it tells you right here, feature context has missing steps, just define them with this. So I literally just, actually, let's go ahead and do it. Huh? Because I have uh, all this editing stuff here. I can go find the bootstrap feature context file. And it's got nothing in it, but basically every hat install has a, a basic class here that you can add things to, so you can program in PHP, like different behaviors, and all, have all, it has all these. You can Google it about the um, these. Wow, what are these things called again? Um, you know, when you do like at API or whatever. Um, oh, hooks, I guess. You put in like at, at after step, and it'll run after every single step. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some interesting things I could do with that. So uh, then, let's change this. Um, Right. Uh, given I am, I'm going to remove the argument. But basically, you saw that, right? The argument. So it actually detected. Oh, there's quotes. So I'm going to put an argument in there. So whatever's in the quotes gets passed into that method. Can, can you increase the font size? Oh yeah, like two or three times. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you can make up a random thing like. <laughs> If I'm in Montreal, you can, I mean, it's PHP, so you could, could actually do some geolocation or whatever, but I'm just going to throw the exception, and then we'll fix it later. So if I commit this change, again, the full cycle goes. Um, 
I hit commit. We'll go back to the PR. I get another vibrating alert. Uh, it says, boom. So now we see there it is. The deploy works successfully. That's actually something you should test, whether you can actually deploy it, update DB, and cache clears work. Uh, so if it doesn't, that'll turn red. And the tests are running. If I click this, I can go to the support portal dashboard and view the, the tests running. I have to fix this bug where this task should show up here. It doesn't. Um, there, the tests are running. And oh, it failed this time. Again, because I screwed up. I didn't change, uh, I didn't change this. So let's just fix that. If I go to files, changed. I'm gonna jump to, oh wow, that's new. Look at that, just GitHub detected a new method and told me that I can go straight to the method in the, in the class. That's a new feature. Uh, this is the phrase I want. So I'm actually not gonna edit that file. I wanna edit my bat tests file. Yep, so if I do this, and I, I'll actually leave that and give them the iron in Montreal, then, and that, that, this actually could be useful for testing, like you're, you're tweaking, you're, this is, your site might wanna change if someone's actually in Montreal, who knows? So you could say like, if, if they're in this location, show this graphic or this text, and you can just, you know, basically, you're manually testing in your head, you're just wasting your own brain <laughs> cycles. It's like, just write this and hit a button, you know? Like I've done a development where it's like, maybe there's four buttons I have to press to reproduce a bug. But man, every time I edit one, one character of code trying to get this bug to fix, I gotta do those four clicks again and it just gets crazy. And instead I just hit up on the command line to run the next, to run the same command again and to enter it and it just does it in seconds. And I can see whether it's not broken or not. Okay, so I'm gonna fix this step, this last step too now here, so let's see if this works. Having a check. Text Coming directly, I'm gonna go super fast in the back to just watch it happening. Um, oh, my bad. Click. And there it goes, my arm vibrates again, and there it is, deploy, get pull, cache clears if it needs to. Once that's done, trigger the test run, and away we go. So you can kind of see that this just gets faster and faster. Um, it's awesome for just getting developers to be more open about their process. And if you, anybody out here is, like, is a supervisor, but the mentality can be, is very common where a developer will like, work locally for days and days and they can't figure out a bug but they don't want to admit that they can't figure out the bug and you know so it's like this whole culture of kind of isolation that happens and you really developers are not efficient as they could be if they just ask for help you know so by giving them these environments that everybody can click on another team member can come in and help point out what you know what they might be missing to solve their problem um oh, that's funny so yeah, there's no pending exception. So I'm, this is all test, so I'm gonna just put, throw this away and not throw an exception and the test will pass. So I look for my file again. Oh yes, the PHP one. I'm gonna edit it, click edit. And I'm just not gonna do anything. Basically, uh, the only way to trigger a failure is to throw an exception. So if you don't do anything, it, it'll pass. Commit it immediately. Let's see if we can. You don't have to say we turn uh, true. Say again. You don't have to say we turn true. Nope. No? As long as an exception doesn't throw. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's all exception based. Okay. Um, so to trigger a failure, you have to throw an exception as long as it. Yeah, it doesn't check the return value. Okay. So here we go. Let's get on a little bit. Oh, that's the verify task. That's not the one I want to look at. <laughs> that has no output, so we missed it. But there it is. All green. So your face is there. I, I assume so. I only checked for the text. <laughs> but I could, I could check for my face, actually. Because um, there's like an element lookup. So I could say there should, I, there should be a visible you know, element with this class. 
or this ID, uh, stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's even steps to like upload a file. So like I built a big site that had to validate like a spreadsheet, right? And so very, it's very important to like say like, oh, these dates are correct or if somebody inserts bad data, I need to know the system is actually catching that and telling, telling the user an error. So I had like three bad spreadsheet files that the hat test would grab, push, I, I can actually show you the code, it would grab the files, push them into the site and check that the error messages were triggered. You know, which is like so much better because your brain, your, your brain is like not configured to just deal with that mentally <laughs> by default. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's look up that. So, because this has got a ton of tests. So actually, let me um, let's go to this dev shop server. We have them all over. And the single sign is so nice, but it is a slow server. Um, yeah, while that's loading, I'll just show you what these tests look like. They can get very long. So I've got like a bad dates, like one for testing that the date validation works. I've got an empty spreadsheet with empty data, uh, so I can catch that. And then like long data if it's too long. And then finally an actual valid spreadsheet so I can test that the, that it'll say everything went, went well. Um, So it's like, feature, upload a good invoice. In order to create invoices, I want to upload a spreadsheet. So given I'm logged in as a user with this role, that's, this is the Drupal Bahat plugin, so it actually has Drupal steps. Um, it'll actually dynamically create a user with a random name, assign them that role, and be logged in, and log them in automatically. You say, given I'm on the home page, it'll click, go back to the home page. If I click this, and then I attach this to this field, and then I press upload, and I should not see error, I should see yada, 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 right? Um, and so this was absolutely crucial, because like this stuff has to work. It's a, it's a payment portal for, for medical research, you know? So like the DNA labs are exchanging invoices, it's all going to this general ledger, it's not actual money, but they need to know that these codes work, they're accurate, um, they're going to the right place, all this stuff. Um, so all this validation, I mean, imagine doing this by, by yourself, <laughs> you know, clicking everything and making sure all this stuff is working correctly. Um, you just can't. So definitely get into bad testing if you can. Um, there's the upload validation one. If I try to upload it on XLS, for example, there you go. Um, when I attach a, this file, <laughs> it should say specified file cannot be uploaded, only uploaded files. Perfect. Uh, user uploads sheets with incorrect data. So this val validates that all of these warning messages are, do appear, um, which is great. Because again, we need to be sure, like absolutely sure that the system will reject bad data. Um, again, user uploads sheet with incorrect, all these different iterations, you know? So what do we do now? We're almost done with that environment, right? I think I liked that the tests are passing. Uh, it's got my, my faces on it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm clicking it and manually saying, oh, wait, actually, wait, I didn't actually look to see if that padding fix went through to my environment yet. Uh, so I can, sh I'll shrink my viewport again and see, there it is, perfect. They're not overlapping anymore. Exactly what I wanted, I'm super happy. I could click this link on my phone, you know, like because it's going through Slack. You just get that notification. You, you just, it's amazing, and it's like a, as a manager, I get this wonderful, exciting feeling. Like out of the blue, I'll see a developer notification come in for a developer push. I'm like, yeah, the work, uh, the work came through. She's finally ready, you know. And so Slack is going off. It's it's, it's fun. <laughs> it becomes a fun thing, and it's not like you're not sitting there waiting. Oh, are they working? Like, what, you know, or did, did they not tell me it's ready? Or you know, it's, it's totally just transparent, all this notification stuff. So, okay, so this looks awesome. I'm totally happy with it. Uh, all the checks have passed. Oh, I requested changes, look at that. So that's not good, that's red, but GitHub UI, I, I approve those changes now. I totally agree that you did, that she, she did a great job. Uh, and now it's, all three checks are passed. So that's, I just think that's amazing. GitHub is like totally just revolutionizing how we can kind of work together 
by putting like manual review and dynamic review all in the same place. It's awesome. Um, so now I'm super happy. I'm just going to click merge. How many was the, I lost my voice, but how many of the approval stuff? Like, is that, I feel like, are they doing some of that because Collab was doing it? Or are they, or have they that been there for a while? You know? No, this is pretty new, yeah. Oh, yeah I okay. think it's less than a month old. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, I don't know. So I think they were trying to catch up, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, but actually, yeah, it's a month or two old. This is a new reviewers, uh, a new reviewers thing. Um, it was actually cool because she it gives her a UI to request a review. See, so here she actually pressed a button. I didn't. I actually didn't know like she could do this. <laughs> and like all of a sudden I got a notification. Oh, you're being requested to review something. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah, the, you know, the approval stuff. It's been good lab a long time. So yeah, they're trying to. That's cool. Hey, they're all they're all just yeah. That's oh, great. Um, yeah. So I, I, on that note, like this is just a Drupal module. The DevShop GitHub module is just designed to work with that API. We can clone it and create GitLab DevShop GitLab module and have essentially the same the same thing. We've got Bitbucket module in there already um, for the pull request part. Uh, but there's like you know there's all sorts of API stuff we can do. I know Drupal.org is looking at the Bitbucket. As an option, they're they're moving ahead with GitLab. They're, oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. It's actually running now and in, in like a testing. That's that's really close to happening. Um, anyway, okay. So, what's going to happen when I merge? This is going to merge to master. Actually, yeah. So let's back up a bit. What's my live site doing? My live site is actually on master ranch right now. Um, this can be totally, totally kosher if you set it up right, because I can't merge the master unless my tests pass, right? So this is, if you put your live environment on a branch, it actually becomes continuous delivery, because as soon as I hit merge, it's going to go to live, um, which I might as well do, or I could tag a release with the, with the tag, but I just love hitting merge and watching all these things happen. So when I hit merge, the pull request will trigger close, so this environment will be destroyed. A merge is technically a push so on, on GitHub, so the git push will automatically trigger a deploy to, to the live environment, which automatically runs cache clearing and does all those things. So I really don't need to do anything else to deploy to live. I can click merge and it just goes to live. So what happens if you discover a problem on the, uh, on the live site? I work very fast to go do it again, <laughs> to fix it, or that's the problem, yeah. Can you uh, merge back uh, the, the... You can deploy to a tag, right? So, like, basically there's a manual UI for deploy code. So you want to remove uh, what you just merged? Yeah, I would have to tag it, basically create a tag okay. in the, of the older code and just deploy that instead. So this, this button okay. will check out whatever branch or tag you so want. You, okay. So it's kind of up to you to... Is it determine where you're tagging or you just, yeah, you have no yeah this is manual that's what I would love to do next is instead of just yeah. keeping this on master trigger the trigger it's automatic tag creation when you merge yeah yeah would be tag, awesome uh, that'd be so cool but tag, uh, policy and yeah yeah that's kind of where, yeah where, where I'd love to go mm -hmm. and cre creating more of a release concept instead of because right now it's still it's still kind of manual where you have to decide <laughs> which tag do I want as opposed to like it could we could with the GitHub API say, oh, we just heard there's a new tag. Here's a new release environment. Automatically, here's a new one on that tag. Yeah. And then we could just say, like, press here to just deploy that instead of making the user, the manager, think about what version is next. And, but this is how Octave Cloud does it now. So I just kind of, that's how it is. And, but it's, again, open source is Drupal. All these things are going to keep improving, um, especially if anybody in here can help start developing with it. Developing on it, but that's another story. So where are the websites hosted? This is on a DigitalOcean server for now, for our, for us. But any Ubuntu server, like um, our clients have data centers, uh, Amazon, whatever. And it's we're not it's not tied to any, any one hosting, and we're we're not building like a hosting platform. If you that's what Dev Shop support is. It's just an SLA will connect to your server, so you maintain your own SLA with your hosting company. So we don't have to worry about like networking or the hardware or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. We just make sure your dev shop and Drupal sites are running. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna click merge and we're gonna go to live. 
Okay, that should be what happens. Let's double check and be looking at our site. <laughs> uh, this is our, old, our current site. It doesn't have the team, right? Nope, just quotes. No team. I have a link, convenient link here to go straight back to the pull requests. Scroll down the bottom. Merge. And now all the bells and whistles are going to start going off. Beep, 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 beep. Because I, because I merged, it's like multiple notifications. Oh my god, of course. I have some strange cookie bug. But I don't know why that happened. It'll already be done by the time we get there. Oh look, this is cool. So it deployed, already deployed to live. This site's already been destroyed. But all these other ones are deploying too, because they're also on master. So it's like we receive a notification, oh, there's new commits to master. We look for every environment that is running on that branch in that repo and we pull it. So they're always up to date. So if I go to my devshop.support, I need to be logged out to actually see this page. Oh, I see, okay. The single sign-on thing is a, if I scroll down, I should see my team. Yay, oh, we interesting, they're smaller. So we'll figure out why that happened in a later session, but that's kind of the whole cycle, right there. Um, it's better that way. It's smaller? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, we copied the quotes. So the quotes, kind of, maybe it's confusing. Maybe we need a little bigger, I don't know. Again, whatever. <laughs> so, I'll design stuff, but the, um, that's it. This, this environment goes away. Yeah, it's the single sign-on. If I log out on DevShop support, it's logging me out of my remote site. That's why I keep going. Yeah, I was confusing myself. Um, yeah. So it's interesting that when you start doing single sign-on, you have to really consider like the branding and mentally showing the person where, where they are. Um, but there you go. And here's an interesting thing. Running tests on your live site can actually be good. I want to know that my face is still there and not just test it on the dev. I actually want to see it. So um, one of the features we used to have that we took out that I want to put back in is being able to specify what tests run on each environment so that we could have a way to say, like, run this set of tests on live to make sure certain buttons work. But we certainly don't want to run, like, all the tests necessarily because you might be creating all this data in production or whatever. But setting up a basic thing where it's like, you know, yeah, I really know on my homepage, even on live, I'm comfortable it running. Be different also. The yeah. Is different than yeah. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting feature. But there you go, it's continuous delivery um, of Drupal by Drupal. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's let's do this one other thing. I have another PR, I think. Yes, user register flow. Oh yeah, I already merged, but then I pushed some other things. But basically, um, oh yeah, let's just do this. Register, here it is. All right, the test failed a couple days ago. So I'm getting much more details into here now. Actually, yeah, so this is how you can take the hat to the next level. Sometimes when you get an error, you, you don't really get enough, in, like just them telling you this text was not found isn't enough. Like I don't necessarily know what page I was on or what page I was looking at or any of these things, but this stuff I was able to do with some custom code in that feature context file because we, it, the system that has all that information is just not printing it out to the user. And so anything you print in these steps, it actually formats, captures it, puts this sidebar up there and uh, I'm able to give debug information so that you can, the developer can actually click that URL to see what the live site looked like and figure out why that text wasn't appearing or whatever. Um, and not in addition to seeing the live URL, it actually saves a static, a static dump of this. This is just a static HTML snapshot of what happened. And uh, actually, let's make it fail with some text in the field. 
right? So if I go back to my branch, edit my test, so I think the last thing that worked was get a support license. When I click get a support license and I fill, oh wait, it's already there. So let's just move this step down right there. So it'll fill in the forms. It'll check for that text sign up. And then when I, when it fails, it should take a snapshot of the current page state, which includes the, the fields filled in. All right. So if I commit this to that branch, it'll trigger a new deploy to that environment, which runs the git pull, poster install, update db, clear the caches, a link to the test task. Let's see. There's a verify happening in between, so it takes a few more seconds to run. Hopefully not too many. There we go. Boom. Composer install on the hat YAML. Step, 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 step. Fills it in. Boom. It failed. Um, why is the text sign up not anywhere in the current page? I don't know, it's doing an automated thing. If I click this last page output. Oh, weird. Didn't fill it in. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I've done this before and actually does save it with the values in there. Anyway, clearly sign up's not on the page, but I just added that. I could register, or I changed the code to do that. You can get test driven development going. As a, as a manager, you can write the test to like with the intent of making it fail and tell the developer go make it pass like do the form alter do the pay whatever you need to do to make that say sign up instead that's what i want you can write the test and as soon as it turns green the developer knows i did it i'm done so you could you could save so much time with like medium lower level developers by just starting that branch and that pr for them and mm -hmm. uh, you know and like putting a couple things in there this is what i expect the site to do the, every single step it's a much, it's a common language that you can all share to describe the functionality of your site instead of saying like, I think a button, make him press a button somewhere and you know, client requirements are sometimes vague. <laughs> so by putting it right there and you can, can all look at that, you can identify the exact functionality you need on every step. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of gets the gist across. I'm not gonna do any more Drupal development on the fly here live. Um, but you know, we did it. I actually deployed that to my live site just now, <laughs> um, which was really fun. So this other stuff, I'm still futzing with like form state and the redirect, and, and you know. But this is essentially the flow I want, and so I can kind of type it out in behalf first and really say like, oh, this is what I'm feeling is a good user experience, and then just work towards that. And you can save a ton of cycles uh, of your development time doing that. So yeah, that's that's essentially this presentation. Um, my company is launching this support portal for for hosting around Drupal and DevShop. Run it on your own servers. We're not building a hosting system, but you, it works great in any data center. And we are well, wiring so up. No SaaS version, right? It's just under yeah. yourself now. Okay. DevShop.support is just another Drupal site that I'm. I have a custom node called server that I store the things like who's allowed to access it, uh, what's the URL. I have a pingdom, I just have a text field that I dump the pingdom widget into. I'll show you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, essentially this is becoming the SaaS and it's like it, syn it synchronizes intercom widget. It'll be the place to submit support requests. Um, it's the single sign-on server. What's, um, is it DevShop or Open DevShop? Um, um, I mean, I, sometimes I refer to it as Open just to be more clear because a uh, DevShop is a generic word, like you have a DevShop, he is a yeah. development shop. Uh, so it's kind of like Atrium, like Atrium is the official project name, but they brand it as Open Atrium. So yeah, that's a tricky thing, I don't know. <laughs> that's why I'm just sticking with the DevShop support thing, and uh, Open DevShop refers to the open source project. So I use it as a differentiator when I'm discussing right. different things, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we just basically have uh, the people page, we've got Teams, which is just a node, and then I even make, you know, an Agar team, and then the team servers, it's just a... Uh, Go here and you can see. Oh, weird. Where am I there? Thanks, Pingdom. <laughs> um, we're going to use different things eventually, but Pingdom's so easy and cheap, and I could just copy the widget in 
uh, one at a time. And like with this, for example, you, uh, this goes directly to the cat slash cast page, which then logs you in automatically. So I can actually just click um, <coughs> launch dev shop and links to cast and you're, and you're logged in. Uh, so I'm basically creating like a central user management page so the customer will be able to assign the team and say uh, add this user to this team and then the code will sync, the users will be synchronized across your rope dev shop and your, this site. So like you'll restrict your users for that Agar server here instead of on your individual site. Um, which gets really fun once you start having multiples and like a developer can have an account and they can be added to multiple teams and be granted access to like five different dev shops or whatever if they end up, if we all, you know, if that's what happens. Um, and yeah, I'm building a um, dev shop support client module that will run as a host master hosting queue to um, basically ping me uh, every minute. There's nothing here, but this is an open source module that will you'll run in your Agar site and, and it'll ping me information that tells me your server's on it. Like it's basically a probe, uh, but for each customer of mine. So I'll know how many users they're running, how many projects, how many sites. I can, t I can put a, some code in there to warn me if the tasks aren't running, for example, um, and do other stuff. And so that way we can basically provide SLA support by knowing everything's online and getting alerts on our own. And, Eventually, we'll write like server agents so that we have control over the OS and packages and things like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I can talk about a million other features that this thing has. There's a, you know, we got we got a Docker module. There's a Ansible uh, modules. Hey, your Ansible lets you turn your host master site into Ansible inventory and you check boxes saying I want these playbooks to run on these servers. Wild stuff. I don't even really use this anymore because I was like, okay, we're getting really dangerous now. Like I don't have to have root access to the servers uh, to run Ansible on there. Um, so I feel like a separate server management only Agar is needed because <laughs> right now you you know you SSH as Agar to another Agar user, so it's like it is secure. But if you want to really control the server, you want to check a box for, to change your PHP version or edit the PHP memory limit, you need root access to can reconfigure the it's, server. The trade-off between wanting to not let people with dangerous things on the front yeah. end, it's yeah. security versus you know, usability, like usability or yeah. making it easier to work with, right? So that's... Yeah, so it, was, it, was, it got really scary when I was like letting developers in to look at the dashboard and do get pushes, and then also right here in the same site, it's like node add server and edit server, <laughs> where you, I'm allowing you to actually add new playbooks dynamically and just say like, oh, this this one's now you're on guy Redis or whatever, um, and it just became like way too powerful. But <laughs> but I, did, I think there's actually potential in just having like just servers only and a server only Agar, where it's like has different expectations. You know, we can work work out something there. Um, and the yeah, the Docker basically. I'm trying to focus my presentations because there's too many features. <laughs> so this one's about PR environments, but we could have a whole other session on a sorry hosting Docker. Um, let me log into my Dev Shop server because if you're familiar with how many people here use Agar already or have in the past ever. <laughs> A good amount, yeah. So servers are this abstracted thing where it keeps track of the services running on it. So when you edit your server, you can choose. There's, this is a Lex that lets encrypt one. You can choose MySQL or Apache, Apache or Nginx. This translates perfectly to Docker Compose services. So I, that's what hosting Docker makes an additional Apache and MySQL service available, but it's, it'll run on Docker. So it uses all this information to write a Docker Compose file. Because it turns out this is what we need. We need the port, like the host name and the links. As soon as you hit save, the verify triggers with Docker Compose YAML generation, runs Docker Compose up and you have containers running. Could it run on the, the maz.io uh, websites? We were just having lunch talking about this. 
there is no reason we couldn't put Hostmaster on the AZIO because it's just a Drupal site. Yeah. So we're like, oh, <laughs> you have an API to launch Drupal sites on Kubernetes? Well, we have a Drupal site that has the things you need to manage the metadata about the sites. All we have to do is add like a node API hook. When a site gets created, ping them AZIO and they, they get a new site. Mm -hmm. So. This is seven. This is eight. Or seven. This is eight. Yeah, I, I added this extra crap in uh, Dev Shop to explain a little bit. It's not a very good help text. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just wondering about that. No, yeah, it's Ager, so Ager 3. Oh, so like it's Ager 3 with. Yeah. Oh, I was The Dev Shop is just modules. It's extra modules, an okay, extra so theme. Maybe it was like you were using like Ager services to communicate, like bring your blood side in your. No, this okay. is straight up. Just Ager 3 with stuff. Straight up Ager 3 with okay. all, its, all its glory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the theme looks better. Yeah. <laughs> it's bootstrap, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Well, uh, all this stuff, you know, it's so hard to just kind of like, you know what we mean. <laughs> try, try to build stuff. And I, I did Dutch Shop so I got a little bit more creative control over what, right. what I wanted to do, and it doesn't exactly fit the mess multi-site hosting use case, but slowly but surely a lot of this stuff made it back into Agar, like a lot of the hosting Git checkout and all that stuff kind of made it back into to Agar. The theme could too eventually, but you know, all this stuff takes time and work and that's why I'm trying to launch a service so maybe we can hire people and actually work on this stuff consistently full-time, like full-time, full-time, actual full-time Agar developers, <laughs> which I'm not sure when the last time that happened was. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I love this stuff. I hope you had a good time watching this specific use case. Um, it's an awesome ecosystem, and we're building more and more stuff all the time. <laughs> Won't be long before there'll be a little Kubernetes class, but we might not even have to worry if, like, the Lagoon API is perfect. Lagoon actually has a GraphQL API for defining their websites. So me and Michael are just like, Bro, that's just make a standard. We can make a standard GraphQL that represents a site, and use that for like Agar and Lagoon. And it's just like they don't have a UI yet. They're waiting on their next big customer to plan a two-year UI development. <laughs> he literally pointed at my poster and was like, "Oh, we're going to do that when we get our next big customer. It'll take us two years, but we're going to do that." And I was like, "I have a proposal for you. <laughs> like, we have total yes. Everyone has their opinions of Agar. We have total creative control. We can make it make it right." But we need backing from companies like his. And I was like, he was like, well, maybe, you know, okay. Maybe we at least have a meeting to discuss what that might be when it, when it happens. Because it's just a Drupal distribution, so we can totally collaborate on it um, if we can design it in a way that works for everybody. And that, that does mean we'll have to change a number of things, but it'll be totally worth it. We're all trying to decouple stuff anyway and, like, not have everything be so monolithic. Um, so, yeah, we're all in the same, like, all in alignment philosophically. You know, like, uh, I totally recommend you watch the Lagoon session that um, once it comes online earlier. Crazy awesome, powerful tool. And they really are just focusing on making it like an API for production hosting. You know, like they're not focused on building UIs yet and any of that. So we're just talking, we're like, that would be amazing. If we just had a thing we could just push a site to and not even care, and they could have their servers all over the world and they use OpenShift and Kubernetes and just, we don't even care. That just that's just perfect. We could actually really get along well, and so like, the future versions of Postmaster could be totally compatible. It's amazing and would be awesome. Um, so yeah, there's lots of exciting future there. Um, I concur. <laughs> cool. Hey, yeah, so yeah, shoot me the questions, or you know, we could just call it. What time is it? It's uh, it's been an hour, I guess. Yeah, it's two fifteen. We got we got to come to fifteen to go to other session. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you have zero time to go to another session. So yeah, run. Thanks. <laughs>